थकान का एक ही उपाय है एक कप कड़क चाय उबलते पानी में थोड़ा सा जिंजर चाय की पत्ती चीनी कड़क चाय के लिए मैं रिकमेंड करता हूँ ताजे दूध से बना रेनबो इवेपरेटेड मिल्क इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डालते हैं जैसे ही बढ़िया रंग आए गैस बंद कर दीजिए रेनबो इवेपरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच रेनबो टॉप गन सीजन थ्री हेलो एंड वेलकम टू रेनबो टॉप गन आई मोर होस्ट Shane Phillips. Today on the show, we look at a man who's credited with building almost half of the iconic buildings in Jebel Ali Free Zone. He's one of the most famous Indian architects and contractors in the UAE. Presented by Nokia, inspired by Cadillac. When you walk into the home of a man who has built hundreds of homes, you expect it to be exceptional. Architect Deepak Arora's home is exquisite. I wondered, is the design which gives the villa its unique character, the hundreds of artifacts lying around, or is it the family? that resides here. Deepak, hi, how are you? How are you? Good nice to see you. Good to see you as well. What an amazing house. This has to be Thank one of the best you. I've ever Thank seen. You. Thank you. And so what, what was some of the thinking behind the design? You know, uh, the concept behind was that let's make an open house. It's a space which you can always feel from wherever you are. And that's how you see this open uh, feeling in this house. So Deepak, you did your tertiary education in India. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, my parents, they had migrated from Pakistan during the partition and my schooling was in government school. Most people as younger adults, they have multiple visions of what they want to be. Did you know exactly or did you have a vision or did that, how did that take fold? You know, uh, at that time, every parent's wish used to be the children should either become engineers, doctors, and nothing beyond. And uh, architecture was one field which was uh, not very popular or acceptable or could give you enough uh, money to make. But it so happened my elder brother opted for architecture. And two, three years he was elder to me and I could see him. And I was fascinated to what he was doing and I followed him. And that's how I did my architecture. So you finished your schooling in India. What brings you to Dubai? What brings you to the UAE? It's, it's probably destiny. Uh, I was in the final year architecture. A company from Russell Kama came to Delhi and opened their office. They wanted some architects to come and help them to do some designs. And they opened their offices on hourly basis for people to work because they had a lot of work to be done. I visited there for two days and uh, I realized that I will not be contributing anything to the way they are handling the business. And I told them, no, I will not be coming uh, from day after. And if you need, I can do this project on my own without having 50 people around. They didn't take me seriously, but then I think in 15, 20 days later, they called me up and they said, I think you are right and let's try if you can help us out. And that's how it started. We finished that project in 15 days, handed over to them, got a good amount of money from them. And they said, why don't you come along with us to Dubai? I said, I can't think of uh, for next three to four months till my education is over. And they said, maybe there is no second time. Well, I said, it doesn't matter. I, I was not expecting this time also to happen. 
and, and it was left to that. I think it's, uh, again, uh, we finished, it was October uh, 30th, I finished my exams, thesis, came back home and found them sitting there in my house. And uh, just a coincidence, they didn't know when my exams are over, when things will change. And they said, uh, are you ready now to come? I said, yes, I just finished everything. I can go. Uh, and they said, 4th November. Why not? I said, it's too early. 4th November, I mean, 30th, you finished. And I could postpone by a week. And I landed here in Dubai on 11th November, 76. The office was in Russell Kama. OK, this was another architectural Company. Yeah, they started, they were also in construction business as their main, okay. but they had a consulting office separate. Oh. So I came and joined the consulting office. Right. Yeah. And how long did you work for someone else for? Uh, I worked with them and then that office closed in, in about 10 months time uh, after we came. Joined another company in Russell Kama, they were doing township of Russell Kama and uh, that also closed. I think the market conditions at that time went down badly. Uh, there was not enough work for everyone. Survival was a bit difficult, but it just happened, you know. There was a Russell Kama poultry farm project coming up, which was about 60 million dirhams financed by the Kuwaitis. Land was given by Russell Kama government and uh, I was appointed by the client to supervise the whole project. And you know, there we spent about two years building that project. And uh, there was a lot of extra work which I could see and people, the contractors there were demanding a different kind of money. And I told the client that I can do this business along with the supervision job you have, which is not occupying me full time uh, and I can save you a lot of money and they agreed to that and we did a lot of that work privately myself and then we finished the project and uh, it was two years of continuous stay on site and it was real hard work I decided to take off for three months and that was the right time and they said okay uh, after three months, we plan to make an extension to the project. They had not made the parent stock forms. They were bringing in one-day chicks, and that's, you know, in the broilers, and then... Uh, so the parent stock form was to come up. They said, this is a big project. If you have a company, we can give it to you. And uh, I established the company there. That was in 80... 1980, yes, or 79. But when I came back after Lee, it wasn't doing well, uh, the poultry farm. And they canceled extension of the product. And in turn, I had to close the company as well, because there was no other so opportunities at that time. It was short-lived, yes, yes. Was that discouraging? Do you think, wow? No, it was not discouraging. It was actually uh, a blessing that I moved from Russell Kama to Sharjah. And uh, I ended up joining Jipka Group and worked with them for a couple of years and was looking for opportunity to restart my own business. So you lose your business, lose your job, and you're telling me this was a blessing. Because I, I knew uh, getting closer to Sharjah in Dubai has more opportunities than we had in Russell Kama. Right, and this in the 80s, Sharjah was the place yes. to be. So how did success come? You know, in uh, 85, the Jabal Ali Free Zone started. And I was reading about it and thinking of if I could get something there to work on. And I met one client from uh, Pakistan. They were here, they, they met me through somebody. And they said, why, why don't you uh, do the design for us? So I did the design and then started off another small one. But I did not see uh, much happening in Jabal Ali at that time from 85 till 90. Uh, everything started changing after the Gulf War. And uh, then we were 
We had left some references which were very small. But there were bigger players coming in uh, into that area. And I, I used to say, what do I have different than, than these guys? They are big, they are grown up, they, they have uh, money they can uh, do. So I, I just thought about that probably it's the architectural value which I can add to these projects. So we started designing those boxes, which you call as warehouses and industrial buildings to give it a very different new look without spending any extra money. And actually that is the turning point for me uh, because most of the uh, construction companies are run by engineers. I was the only one until till date as an architect running a construction business. So I added all those values to... So was that 92, 93? 92 onwards. 92, 92 onwards. onwards, yes. I personally followed certain principles in life, mainly perseverance. Put in your best, don't stop. And I'm sure when you are putting in everything, the luck starts also working with you and you end up achieving what you're looking at. Presented by Nokia, inspired by Cadillac. Gapshap ke saath to ek kap chai banti hai, masala chai. इलायची लौंग और दालचीनी इसको कूट लें उबलते पानी में डालें इसके अंदर चाय की पत्ती और चीनी डालिए बढ़िया मसाला चाय बनाने का मेरा एक छोटा सा राज है ताजे दूध से बना रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डाल दे ये हुई ना मसालेदार बात रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच Rainbow Top Gun Season 3 I remember him bringing a lot of the business home. He used to do a lot of his work in the, in the living room uh, late at night. And I didn't understand what he was doing, but I always saw him fully into what he was doing. He was always dedicated, and uh, he put his heart and soul into what he was doing. And you could see it. You know, even as a child, you knew this man was busy and he meant business. He, you know, he was not fooling around. And I think that's something you learn subconsciously then. That, uh, you know, when you have to get things done, you have to be focused, you have to be dedicated, and only then does it happen. And I think that's something he has. He always lives in the moment, gets his work done, uh, methodically and then uh, moves on to the next thing. Deepak, tell us what do you feel are the traits of a successful person? You know, you should first believe in yourself. Uh, you should be true to what you're doing and you must enjoy what you're doing. And these are three things backed up with hard work will definitely take you to success. And when you say be true to yourself, I think this is where a, a lot of people miss the boat, right? Is, I mean, does that come down to your self-awareness, self... Uh, you know, like, we, we are into design and build business, and uh, uh, there's no one else supervising or checking what you're doing. And it's your moral responsibility that you do not take out anything, but try and must add to the projects or the buildings. And that makes you true to what you're doing. So do you have any mantras or North Star principles that really guide you through the darkness? You know, mantra is actually setting up your own principles. And uh, I personally followed certain principles in life which uh, made me to rise and fall and get up, uh, mainly perseverance, uh, not bog down if, when the conditions are difficult for you. Put in your best, don't stop even if the results are not very, very attractive. And I'm sure when you are putting in everything, the luck starts also working with you and you end up achieving what you're looking at. You've built so much in and around the UAE. Can you tell us what have been some of the most 
exciting or more difficult projects that you've done? You know, the first most exciting project which I got was Swarovski. The sheer shape and the design we came up with was really complicated. Then we have been working on uh, with Emirates Airlines on building their 24 meter high logistics center, which is used by Danata. It was very unusual structure which we came up with and uh, we have built the call center for them in purely steel structure. That's been a very wonderful project. Uh, we built some very challenging schools in Hatta. We did three phases of Black & Decker project and uh, there was another challenging project which was Makita. Another one which we did was for wild flavors. Uh, we did a massive project for tobacco processing plant for a company coming in from Zimbabwe. They have set up a huge plant and we have been still on to the expansion of that project. We recently did the Infinity Showroom on Sheikh Zayed Road. It's a very special structure, especially the front glazing part, which was specially done to the design by the Japanese uh, requirements. We have done the Nissan on Sheikh Zayed Road, Nissan headquarters and training center in Jabal Ali. We did the compact building, which was built and financed and subleased by us. So these are some of the projects which, which I always cherish. Working with Mr. Rora has been quite enriching. We've been working together for around 13 years now. It's been an experience to work with him. Every project, we learn something new with him. And the best part of working with him is that he's an architect himself. So you are in one of the most exciting sectors in the UAE. It uh, really has its uh, peaks and valleys. If anybody knows what's happening in this sector, it's you. What's your prediction on what, uh, what we're going to see from the real estate sector over the next five years or ten years? You know, uh, Dubai has built such a, a good infrastructure and the security infrastructure. It'll, continue to attract people here. And uh, you may have, uh, the real estate probably will continue to grow. You might have small corrections uh, at times. Uh, good locations will always pay off. And I think it's, in general, it's going to be good in the long run. Rentals can go up and down with the supply and demand, but in general, the property prices will have a steady growth. It may have stagnation for for some time it's not going further but uh, i think in general if you can hold on it'll pay off and so you're visioning a bull run up to dubai expo 2020 now with no major dips before then absolutely absolutely well this conversation is getting extremely interesting but i've been signaled to take a break so coming up We'll be talking to the family behind the man. We're going to meet Deepak's family and his two sons who are both involved in the business themselves. So stay with us. My success is linked to design and build. Most of the construction companies are run by civil engineers. They are not involved in the design process. And uh, here we are, have become like a one-stop shop. We could offer them better services, economical solutions, based on the experience we had. Presented by Nokia, inspired by Cadillac. This is not a phone to just capture beautiful things. This phone captures feelings. It memorizes dream machines and the goosebumps you got when they screamed. To record a jump into the unknown and relive the madness, the dry mouths, the exploding chests. Introducing the large screen new Nokia Lumia 1520 with a full HD display, full HD video recording and distortion free sound capture. Don't just record, relive. When you shoot for the moon, you build your courage, test your passion and persevere. The all-new 2014 Cadillac CTS, a bold journey. Purane gaane, purane dost, ghar ki yaadein, 
और इलायची चाय उबलते पानी में इलायची चाय की पत्ती और चीनी डालें कुछ देर गैस पे उबलने दें इलायची चाय तभी अच्छी बनेगी जब आप यूज करेंगे रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क जो बना है ताजे दूध से इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डाल दे इतना सिंपल घर की याद दिला दी रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच रेनबो टॉप कॉन सीजन थ्री Hello and welcome back to Rainbow Top Guns. We're here in the beautiful home of Deepak Arora and his family in Plush Emirates Hills. Deepak, tell us, how did you meet your wife? Uh, I was in the uh, arranged marriage. Uh, my parents and her parents brought us together. And when I saw her first time, I, I felt, yes, that's the right thing. That's the right lady for you. And that's how it clicked. And how involved is your wife in the business? My wife was fully involved in the initial days of setting up of our business. Uh, in fact, I had very little time and we could not afford to employ many people. So she used to go, she even learned computers, learned accounting, and for the first five, six years, we have run our business without any accounting. Mainly in the initial years of the business, I tried and uh, gave all my time and support. Uh, while he was busy doing other things, I used to do the banking and running around uh, and being in the office. So I did that for some time, till the boys came in. Then I took a back seat, gladly. Uh, she's taking care of everything else. <laughs> Dad's taking care of the professional side. My mom's, you know, nutrition and keeping us healthy and happy. And parent-teacher meetings as well. <laughs> She's been to all of them. <laughs> I have three boys to cope with now, but very soon I'm getting two beautiful girls into the house who are going to help me take care of these boys. So I'll go back to my one boy all over again. <laughs> you have two sons. Yes, they're very career oriented. They work very hard. They have been uh, very disciplined boys. And uh, Raghav, the elder one, decided that he wants to do architecture. Uh, younger one started off his career as computer engineer. And in the first year, he opted out. And he said, no, I don't like it. I rather go for civil engineering. And he took up civil engineering and uh, followed up with masters in construction management. And now they're both in the business. Now they're both in the business with me. And uh, I see them putting in a lot of hard work, trying to take things forward. He's very uh, balanced in his uh, emotional response to situations. You know, if he wins a project, he's not, he doesn't go over the top. Or if he loses some projects or money or whatever it might be, he doesn't get in a depressive state. He stays quite uh, focused, balanced. And uh, I think if you maintain that balance, you go in the long run, it, 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 it suits you well. I think he's very calm and very shrewd with his ways, and he's very funny also at the same time. Deepak, what inspires you? Uh, as an architect, inspires me all the good work I see done by other people or other architects as well. But there are one or two main guys who left an impression on me. One of them was the place I was working with in Delhi while I was uh, graduating. Uh, the second person I met was in Dubai, Norwegian architect who, who is a very, very nice person, a very nice human being who, who could do things with his own hands, in, in not only just sketching or drawing, but even to cutting tools, woodwork, joinery, he can put his hands into anything. And that was amazing to see that guy doing it. And, and I really picked up a lot from him uh, during my initial days here. Do you have any dream projects? Is there anything out there you haven't done that you'd love to uh, do? I think we haven't done many things. Uh, I would look forward to more and more challenges uh, the way it comes. Uh, dream is always big, 
but let's see if it works out well. What's the secret to your success? Because there's so many architects in the market. What, what makes you different? You know, uh, my success is linked to design and build. Most of the construction companies are run by civil engineers. They are not involved in the design process. They only tender for projects designed by others. And uh, here we uh, have become like a one-stop shop. And here we could offer them better services, economical solutions based on the experience we had. What's your favorite building in the UAE? You know, there are a couple of uh, very nice buildings, and a lot of them are definitely good projects here. Uh, but one of them to name is uh, Burj Al Arab. And uh, Burj Khalifa, of course, being the tallest, has a different scale to it. Uh, other than that, I think which is not being so much noticed is the index tower. It's one of the most beautiful buildings I've seen from inside. Deepak, I want to thank you so much for coming on Top Guns today. We think we've learned so much. I think the bedrocks of your, the big takeaways for me anyway, were the hard work, you know, success is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It's slow and steady, wins the race. And don't focus on making money, focus on doing a great job and providing a great service to your customers. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's it for this episode of Rainbow Top Guns. I'm your host, Shane Phillips, saying Masalama. Luck, as we hear, is, is, is an important factor. A lot of people do a lot of hard work, but they are not successful. Luck probably has an importance, uh, but I would say more than looking at the luck, to be on your side, do what you can. I mean, they, they, this is what I, I believe, that you continue putting in the best you can.